i'll be taking up indian economy component for you okay so i welcome you all to rajkumar sais academy now uh, first of all i'll brief you i think other teachers would also would have briefed you on uh, the importance of a particular subject uh, whether it is history geography similarly i'll tell you the importance of indian economy uh, with respect to upsc okay and then we'll get into the subject and how do we deal with the subject what are the areas we'll be focusing and how the learning process as far as economy is concerned how are we going to do all that i uh, know i'll be discussing today okay so first and foremost thing is uh, many students think that economics is very difficult but first i want to make it very clear that economics is very interesting and very easy to understand provided you understand the concepts so always remember whenever we are uh, dealing with economy as a subject concepts are very very important so what when i mean what i mean by concepts is understanding the concept rather than just mugging up facts so once the concepts are clear you can understand newspaper well you can integrate things well I, and always remember we have to learn from outside outside in the sense any concept which we are trying to understand from the book we have to link it up to whatever is happening around us we have to make observations around us to see really like whether this concept works or not so that is how we have to uh, learn economics and that's how you can remember economics well so this is one uh, very important as uh, which i wanted to make it very clear to all of you so first of all the subject is not at all difficult the subject is very very simple and not audible is it audible everybody audible okay okay somebody has okay okay fine 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 okay okay purna full view us no full view yes okay okay fine fine so so oh fine fine sorry so now uh, two things here one is as far as uh, our economy is concerned so this is these three days we'll be discussing basics of indian economy and we'll try to understand okay the basic concepts so whenever i deal with economics what we will do, do we will be doing is around uh, somewhere around 15 to 20 hours we'll be spending on only understanding basics basics in the sense we'll try to learn all the keywords in the format of story this is my approach basically for any class so basics when i say basics basics is not with respect to a particular topic or a particular uh, area basics is with respect to the whole subject of economy so once the whole subject of economy basics are done then automatically we can get into the core concepts which will be very very simple okay so this will be my approach always so first 7 to 8 days around 15 to 15 hours we'll be discussing basics understanding basics it includes ncert it includes concepts it includes all the basics which are needed for indian economy and once we are strong with the basics we can also solve prelims questions along with that we can also uh, you know understand the other areas of economy very well so this would be the approach this is my approach and coming to the importance of the subject so indian economy will be useful first of all in prelims around 20 questions you will get around 20 questions number wise okay so whether it is 20 22 questions and remember it is like maths in the sense if the concepts are clear we can at least get 18 out of 20 questions right in the prelims so this is something very very important because the return on effort is very high as an economics teacher i always talk about return on investment so when you are putting in so much of effort so what is the probability of getting things right okay so unlike other subjects i'm not saying other subjects you can't score but economics is like maths in the sense like once you know the concept there is no chance of going wrong so like that out of questions out of 20 at least 18 questions will be in a position to mark it right in the prelims so the weightage 18 to 22 questions you get in the prelims as far as indian economy is concerned that is one thing which uh, you have to uh, understand then coming to mains okay so there is paper 3 okay so in paper 3 out of 20 mains questions around 8 to 11 questions 
okay in fact if you include agriculture also around 11 to 12 questions including agriculture in paper 3 will be from indian economy and agriculture remember this so that means it's a huge weightage around 110 to 120 marks plus in the mains in paper 3 alone this is one more important thing which we should understand then another important aspect is the essay paper so every year if you see essay paper there will be at least one or two economic topics to be written okay so today we will discuss that also like once you learn a particular concept uh, if there is an essay related to that particular concept how are you going to do it okay for example uh, there was an essay uh, last year it says uh, poverty anywhere is threat to prosperity everywhere i am repeating it poverty anywhere is threat to prosperity everywhere now this was one topic so it can be related to economy you can relate it to something like uh, uh, indian society so but essay when we are talking about essay it's not just about the concept along with the concept you should be thinking in 360 degrees okay so this uh, thinking of 360 degrees and all i will be discussing a little while later for everything first of all basics should be clear okay for example earlier uh, in 2015 there was this essay which says can capitalism be made inclusive okay so this was a economics essay so capitalism is a word you know uh, so i'll discuss that today so can capitalism be made inclusive this was the essay so once the words are clear once the concepts are clear then only we can brainstorm our thinking then only we can brainstorm our okay so can capitalism be made inclusive was one essay so like this another important area so essay basically if you see 150 to 160 marks you can score an essay so another area where economy plays a crucial role is is the essay so essay component very very important almost like it is half the optional score okay so therefore scoring 150 and 160 you can do in that economics plays a crucial role because every year you will have at least one or two essays uh, which are economy related so therefore when you are trying to read newspaper when you are trying to understand syllabus you also have to think it from this dimension also okay then another important aspect is coming to the interview so any interviewer any interviewer especially if you are marking irs as your first or the second option so obviously they will ask about economic dimensions economic di dynamics of economics in the present scenario for example because of covid right now indian economy is not doing well and there's huge amount of unemployment many people have gone below poverty line should government focus on privatization or should government give support should government help people by giving them uh, subsidies or giving them something like uh, free schemes okay so or should government support industrialists so that they will create jobs so everything is something like your dilemma for the government when government does not have money so during covid crisis uh, when economy is not doing well so money is not coming into government's pocket so government's hands are tied no government cannot spend on every possible aspect so where government has to spend so these kind of questions on the practical note they can ask in the exam so do you think privatization is a very good thing which india can do right now suppose you talk about our present government so modi ji's government is too much interested in privatizing everything so they may ask you a question like you have crisis like covid india's health sector is not doing well okay or as far as education sector is there government spending is very limited are out of the pocket that means we spend from our pocket around 60 61 percent of health spending is out of the pocket expenditure that means we are spending from our own pocket unlike other countries like developed countries like us where insurance policies are there their out of the pocket spending is very very less but in a poor country like india we have to spend money from our pocket now this is a big challenge okay so that means is it that government is doing the right thing or do you think government's health infrastructure is bad or government is not spending adequately on health so these things actually uh, have to be focused on so like this they will ask question they can ask question from any dimension suppose we talk about job creation okay or you talk about artificial intelligence many of you know big data artificial intelligence etc okay now automation automation is on the go so when you're trying to automate things when you're trying to come up with uh, digitalization automation 
automatically job losses will be there every i'll talk about that for example any industry for example let's say uh, now uh, educational institutions are coming up with tablets isn't it like byju's and all now if this tablet school tablets like byju tab if it can replace the school teacher now school teachers are frustrated now because of covid there is a problem there's job losses now if byju can market his tab well okay that means is it the machine that is going to replace the teacher a simple example to talk about automation so there will be job losses also that can happen you know so like this from multiple angles in the interview there can be questions which they can ask okay so therefore we also have to focus on these things like in the interview what are the areas they can ask so another important uh, area where economics helps you is the interview so prelims around 20 questions in the mains paper 3 10 to 12 questions from economy and agriculture in essay again every year there is at least one or two essays coming from indian economy component and then in the interview definitely you have to answer questions on economics or current dimensions of economics the current economy whatever is there they will ask you questions on those so like this it is in one of the schools of bangalore they introduce robot as a teacher okay very good uh ah. good okay so ah uh, see tomorrow you don't need a robo also everything can be automation i'll 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 talk about it okay fine so this is how it is okay so moving forward with the subject now getting into the subject now you, everybody has understood no i think enough of what what has to be done uh, that is uh, the importance of the subject now talking about economy as such okay there are different economic theories okay so there are certain societies which we call them as capitalistic societies and there are certain societies which we call them as socialistic societies so here i am talking about two different words so one is basically i am using the word capitalism and another is i am using the word socialism my first question to you all you can put it in the chat okay you can speak out also but you put it in the chat so india in the present scenario which one is better is it capitalism that is better or is it socialism that is better okay so capitalism or is it socialism that is better and i know that some of you may not be knowing what is this capitalism what is this socialism etc okay so some students are giving intelligent answers like mixed economy very good okay socialism is better okay mixed social nice economy what is nice economy i think capitalism okay in covid time socialism okay fine fine good so first and foremost now if we try to observe the innovations across the globe okay so take the examples of the best of the best entrepreneurs who talk about innovation for example whether it is the tesla everybody knows about tesla car or i think you know about spacex we know about steve jobs okay or the microsoft owner so when we talk about any innovation okay so we find these innovations are coming from purely capitalistic societies before i explain what is capitalism like countries like uk U us you find that there is lot of scope for research there is lot of scope for innovation and these are purely capitalistic countries so here you, that means innovation is coming from those countries where there is something called as freedom to do business if you don't have freedom to do business you cannot expect innovation that much is clear you cannot expect innovation if there is no freedom to do business okay so that benefit is there a simple example is uh we have warren buffett i think most of you know warren buffett everybody knows warren buffett right everybody knows warren buffett yes okay so yes 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 so warren buffett you all know right so warren buffett was once okay do you think it is your talent intelligence that today you have become one of the richest man or is it some kind of luck that luck favored you and therefore you became rich now this was the question which was asked in an interview now for this question warren buffett answer was very simple he said 
keeping talent aside keeping intelligence aside i was born in a country where i had access to learn about finance i had access to great teachers who taught him about stock markets so when other countries like india we were fighting for freedom struggle we were fighting for freedom struggle we were fighting for survival we were fighting for basic liberty but that is a time when warren buffett could invest his time and learn about stock markets so stock markets is something which is very big for us even today in india but warren buffett in those days when other countries were fighting for freedom he had the leverage he had the advantage now that is luck if warren buffett would have been born in afghanistan then the scope there's no luck there then comes his talent his intelligence etc where he has learned several things and therefore he was now this of this is very important that there should be a combination of both okay so uh, i think uh, till here it is clear okay so it clearly shows that innovation and all was coming from only those countries uh, where there is freedom to do business or where there is less government control so when i'm using the word capitalism one word one thing comes to our mind is private sector is predominant private sector is predominant okay and government's interference is minimum government's interference is minimum so now so whenever i'm talking about capitalism it means market or government's interference is going to be limited there is more freedom for private sector to do business the gov government will not decide how much you have to sell and at what price you have to sell government will not decide okay so then if government is not deciding the amount of production or the amount of or the price at which you are selling if government is not deciding then who is going to decide anybody so in capitalism private player is given freedom government's interference is minimum okay government is not going to decide how much you are going to produce government is not going to decide how much at what price you are going to sell then who is going to decide what are you going to sell and how much at what price you are going to sell so it is going to be decided by an aspect called market now somebody has written that there so they have written this word word called market so market is nothing but a simple definition of market is it is a place where buyers and sellers meet it is a place where buyers and sellers meet that is what is market so amazon is a market place Amazon is a marketplace Amazon is a marketplace where buyers and sellers are meeting so here Amazon is not producing products Amazon is a kind of an intermediate entity where you have buyers and sellers who are coming and buying so market is a place where buyers and sellers meet and when buyers and sellers are meeting the prices are going to be determined based on demand and supply remember so here two words here one is demand i have written okay the price will be decided by demand is one word another word here i am writing here is supply don't worry today in the first class i'll not be drawing any graphs no question of drawing the graph will not confuse you but remember here it is about demand and supply so when i'm referring to market it 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 is nothing but a place where buyers and sellers meet and there will be the price will be determined based on demand and supply so when i'm talking about a concept called demand okay a demand for a product a demand for a service will play a crucial role in terms of deciding the price now always remember whenever i'm talking about demand it is not just about the desire to buy a product you may be having the desire to buy rolls royce but the most important aspect is not the desire but it is the ability to pay you don't have the ability to pay your salary is 50000 per month and you are thinking about rolls royce means that means there is no point so if today you have showroom big showrooms of bentley and all coming into bangalore hyderabad or mumbai 
it means that there are people who don't who not only desire to buy such cars but they also have the ability to pay so whenever you are talking about demand it's very very important that along with the decision or desire to buy a product you should also understand that you should have the paying capacity you should have the purchasing power somebody has written purchasing power i don't want to use words now so it is something like it's not about desire to buy but it is also ability to pay now one more observation if you see now during covid crisis obviously salaries have gone down people have lost their jobs therefore obviously one observation is demand for products will not be there that much is clear demand for products will not be there when demand for products is not there then the producers who are producing products the businessmen who are producing products may not produce products simple logic no when there is demand only they will produce and when there is no demand they are not going to produce the product and when they are not going to produce the product they don't need people they need not recruit people because you are not producing so you don't need labor so that is when there will be retrenchment of labor that is when you kick out labor from the industry people will start losing jobs this is how it happens now when people start losing jobs what will happen they will not get salaries means again there will be a problem with respect to their paying capacity their ability to pay or their purchasing power their paying capacity or purchasing power will not be there when purchasing power is not there again demand will not be there are you able to get this point so it's a chain it's a chain so because of covid if salaries are going down people's consumption their ability to consume products is going to reduce so that means what will happen demand for products is going to decrease okay so when demand for products is going to decrease okay so what is the problem here demand is going to come down okay so when demand for products is going to re reduce automatically what will happen production those who are producing businessmen they will not produce when they are not producing what i'm trying to say is when they are not producing obviously when production is not there then you will not recruit people that means there will be retrenchment of labor labor jobs will not be there so when jobs are not there automatically jobs are not there then paying capacity that means what again purchasing power their ability to buy products or purchasing power will be less so when purchasing power is going to be less then again obviously there will not be demand so when there is no demand there is no production and continuously you will find people are losing jobs so during covid this is one scenario which you can observe because there is no demand there, there need not be demand because people do not consume so like this the cycle can be there and because of this you will have uh, problems i hope it is clear everybody is able to follow and i hope the voice is also okay now okay so this is what i uh, i think this this approach you have understood so everybody is understood in capitalism okay whatever prices or whatever is the production it is going to be decided based on the forces of market now here when i am referring to forces of market i am talking about demand and supply forces of market means i am referring to demand and supply okay so price will be decided based on demand and supply how much i will produce will also be decided based on demand government will not tell produce 1000 scooters produce 1 lakh cars government is not going to decide it is basically the forces of market so when i am referring to forces of market i am referring to demand and supply today i am not going to draw any graphs related to demand demand to supply so just try to understand the concept okay so in capitalism in capitalism we will find that the private sector is going to be above the public sector so private sector you can see there will be above the public sector in the sense that private sector will be running the economy so the economic fundamentals or the economy of a country is run by the private sector government will not completely or government will not drive the economy government will only be like a facilitator it will facilitate things 
it will set norms it will give guidelines but government will not be running businesses so in the recent budget our finance minister's first statement was government has no business to stay in business government has no business to stay in business this was the line which she used okay so government has no business to stay in business means present government is looking towards moving towards complete capitalism not complete in the sense yes they want to focus on market economy they want to give complete freedom to private players to do business and they believe that government is only going to regulate things government will think of welfare government will set norms and guidelines government will be a facilitator government will not run businesses that is a clear indication in the by the finance ministry uh, by the finance minister or by by, by the ma madam nirmala sitaraman madam she when when she saying so it is private sector which is going to be predominant in capitalistic societies private sector is going to drive the economy i hope till here you have understood okay in capitalism private sector is predominant number one freedom to do business is there obviously okay government interference in terms of economic fundamentals is going to be minimum government will not interfere government will not say you sell so many uh, uh, cars you sell so much of rice at this price government will not interfere with respect to economics okay so till here i hope things are clear okay so here if you see in market economy okay so where what am i referring here market economy is one thing which is the word which i used here okay so when i'm talking about market economy one is demand and supply you can see that of course demand and supply there is free regulation means government regulation will be minimum government will not interfere every now and then with respect to business fundamentals in india still you know that unless and until you have your political party in, you cannot do business freely whichever political party comes to power is their related business people flourish in india unless and until you are like the reliance of the bigger industries this is how in india uh, things are even today we'll talk about that a little later okay so production everything is based on demand and supply everything is based on demand and supply when it comes to market now one question to you all are there any problems of market economy like this you are running based on market economics do you think there will be any problems with respect to market economy you can push it in the chat yes rich become rich poor become poor okay yes people's buying capacity okay okay in if government regulations aren't followed might can affect income disparity okay fine fine got the point so here let's take india india just after independence take the case of india just after independence okay so just after independence nehru ji in spite of being western educated see nehru ji is looks like more like a foreigner he is western educated but still he did not adopt principles of pure market he did not adopt principles of capitalism straight in india remember this we did not adopt principles of capitalism straight into india because if you observe let's take an example everything runs based on market okay now market runs based on demand that means market runs based on wants wants are different from need want is different needs are different for example i am hungry i need some basic meal some roti but i want to eat kfc burger is a want i want to reach my destination i am traveling i may use a motorcycle or a cycle 
but i want to travel only in audi is a want there is a difference between want and a need in capitalism needs are sold as wants in capitalism needs are sold as you don't even realize that sorry uh, yeah in capitalism wants are sold as needs that means it's a want but you feel it as a need simple logic when somebody is selling his kidney for an iphone in china that fellow has done it so to to get that new iphone he sold his kidney he believed that iphone is a need or a necessity now this is what capitalism can do now when we talk about hunger when you talk about basic necessities okay it's a need but the problem is in a country like india just after independence handling needs itself was a challenge forget about wants because after freedom struggle our economy was bad okay life expectancy was less we are bad in education bad in health no purchasing power our private sector was not developed to handle bigger industries etc just after independence this was a the situation then under such circumstances government had to handle needs for example no when we talk about needs okay so if you see suppose in dantewada district in chatisgarh it's a naxal prone area everybody needs mobile phones there okay but if airtel is not interested to go to dantewada why because the threat is high okay so they will not be going but is there a need for using mobile phones there the need is more because they are living in a insecure place or an axel prone area that is when bsnl will do its job just understand this need is always different from want okay so for example everybody needs basic health care the bigger super specialty hospitals may not be interested in going to rural areas simple logic why there is no demand why there is no demand because they do not have the paying capacity but do you think there is a need there definitely there is need for good health care there is a need for good schools there is a need for good institutions in rural areas but you can't expect everybody to go to rural areas and start setting up the business units because there is no market there is no demand simple logic but there is no market means there is no demand but there is a need then who is going to handle or facilitate or uh, fulfill these needs so that is where capitalism can fail that is where capitalism uh, can fail i think you can, you are able to understand coca cola is not a need coca cola is a want but when i was driving to the rural areas of kerala i was on a tour i could see that water was not available but coca cola bottles were available in the nook and corner every nook and corner of tribal districts also coke was available this is what you should understand when coke uses water the resources water resources are used water is not available but coca cola and thumbs up bottles are available now this is something we should understand uh, about capitalism okay so capitalism is good only but at the same time there are some problems of capitalism